that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God appear dark shadows put to flight rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee O Israel Good evening and welcome to our Carols by Candlelight service. It's a joy to have you with us this evening. And we do pray that as we go through the evening, that you will be richly blessed by our time of fellowship together. As we hear from God's word, as we sing familiar carols, and as we expect and hope for the dawning of Emmanuel, God with us, may we be enriched in this Advent season. As we begin our time together this evening, our call to worship says this, Rejoice, for God is with us. Emmanuel. In the darkness of our world shines God's holy light. Now there is a reason to hope, to love, to laugh, and to live. God is truly with us. Thanks be to our good God. Let us unite our hearts in prayer as we begin our service together. Let us pray. Gracious God, with joy and thanksgiving, we gather as your people. We have come to hear again the timeless story of Christ's birth. In the excitement of this night, Quiet our hearts, that we may know the peace and fullness of this holy time. 
Shine, O light, in the darkness of our world. Sing, O angel, in the stillness of our hearts. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom God's favor rests. This we pray in the name of the child of Bethlehem. Amen. We're going to begin our Carols by Candlelight service together by singing that wonderful and beautiful carol, Once in Royal David City. Our first scripture reading tonight is from the Old Testament, and it's from the prophecy of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The birth of Jesus is foretold. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, 
But in the latter time he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We're going to sing the next carol, that wonderful carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Our second scripture reading this evening is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, the birth of Jesus. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Our next carol this evening is O Holy Night.
Our third scripture reading this evening comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 13 to 15, the shepherds and the angels. We're going to sing to God's praise as we sing the words of the carol, Angels We Have Heard on High. fourth scripture reading comes this evening from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11, the visit of the Magi. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and ascertained from them 
what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. It used to be summer when Christmas came round, beneath tall southern skies over sun-scorched ground with the backyard cricket and the barbies, the beach, munching on mangoes to watch the Queen's speech, the slatherings of sunscreen, the glorious glare and toasting the sunshine in the warm evening air. It used to be summer when I was young, a golden age in a land far flung, but there came a point I crossed the divide, went up in the world and summer had died. December is dark now, the nights close in, so we huddle together as kith and as kin. It's winter now when Christmas rolls round, we celebrate still though with different surrounds. We mull the wine, strike the matches, light the fires, batten the hatches, gather around the warming beam of family love or a TV screen. So safe inside, no place to go, we toast marshmallows and let it snow. Now, summer's gone now, if you've been around, you've felt the fall, life's run aground. We've gone up in the world, seen the light die. So what's our hope? The dark defy? Stoke the hearth, retreat indoors, rug up warm with you and yours? The shadow reaches even here, but this is the place for Christmas cheer. It's dark in the Bible when Christmas is spoken, always a bolt from the blue for the broken. It's the valley of shadows, the land of the dead. It's no place in the inn, so he stoops to the shed. He's born to the shameful. He bends to the weak. He becomes the lowly, the God who can't speak. And yet, what a word, this Savior who comes. Our dismal, abysmal depths he plumbs. Through crib and then cross, to compass our life, to carry and conquer our brother in strife. He became what we are, our failures he shouldered to bring us to his life, forever enfolded. He took on our frailty, he took on all comers, to turn all our winters to glorious summers. It's Christmas now, whatever the weather. Some soak in the sun, some huddle together. But fair days or foul, our plight he embraces. Real Christmas shines in the darkest of places. fifth scripture reading this evening comes from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, 
and we have seen his glory. Glory is of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. We're going to come to God's Word and unpack it together. As we do so, let's unite our hearts and let us pray together. God of light, you've revealed your very self to us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Your one Word made flesh who lived among us, full of grace and truth. Open us to your revelation once again, that in the words of your Holy Scripture, we might know your presence and follow in your light always. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, here at Allness Baptist Church, over our Advent and Christmas series, we've been looking at God with us. And tonight in our time together, I want to look at God with us, the assurance. You see, there's a big difference between God for us and God with us. And the birth story of Jesus is a perfect example of that. A bunch of shepherds sitting in a field. And a couple of poor kids to gather together at a barn in some backwater Roman province. Yes, God was with us there. And any other last place on earth. And you might find that God is actually here with us this evening. And this evening, I want to take the slant on John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14, where John records for us how God became flesh and dwelt among us, how that assurance became a reality, that Jesus, the one foretold, would be the one who is as we unpack and begin to look at John's gospel, we see in the first five verses of this beautiful gospel, we see Christ's holiness. Or a, a fancy word for that is Christ's divinity. We read, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You see, that promise that we find from God back in Genesis when humanity fell in the splendor of its holiness in the perfection that was in the Garden of Eden. Sin entered in, and that perfection became destroyed. Our rebellion against God and God's way of doing things tarnished that relationship. But in that garden story, God promises one who would come to conquer sin. One who would be God's rescue plan. One who would move into the neighborhood as Eugene Peterson so beautifully puts it in his paraphrase. God would move in, in the birth of Jesus Christ. In the beginning, before anything, was the Word. Jesus was there in that triune nature with God. He was in the beginning with God and all things were made through Him. 
the cosmos, the, the grandeur and majesty of this earth in which we live, the stars and the handiwork, the rivers and the mountains. Jesus was there in the beginning as God spoke forth and that creation was made. We see the holiness of God. Because in verse 3 it says, All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. You see, Jesus was there in the beginning. He was the creator and sustainer. He was the one who fashioned everything. He was the life giver. And what a wonderful way to, to look in the holiness of Jesus, the divinity of Jesus, as we see one who we see, John says, in him was life. And the promise of God throughout the generations to the nation of Israel is that he would want and have a relationship with them. But as we know how the story goes, rebellion and brokenness, them thinking they could do it their own way, would end them with them being placed into exile. Would ultimately end with God not speaking for over 400 years. Then into that crisp, clear evening. Jesus would leave the glory and the majesty, the splendor and beauty of heaven and the throne of glory and come into this world. He would come in as that vulnerable babe in a manger, in that backwater town of Bethlehem. He would come and he would usher in God's new rescue plan. That babe in that manger that night was God's fulfillment. And we know that because in the world's most famous verse of Scripture, John 3.16, we read, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have eternal life. For God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Jesus. But as John continues on in his beautiful declaration of, of the reality of God's foretold word becoming flesh and taking on bone and flesh and sinew in that form of that helpless babe in that feeding trough in that inn in Bethlehem. We know that there was another baby, Elizabeth's and Zachariah's son, John who would be used mightily by the Lord, one of the last Old Testament prophets. But he would be the one to declare Christ's herald and secondly the Savior. Verses 6 to 8, we, we see these words, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. You see, into that brokenness, into the darkness of our world, into the, the sin and quagmire of, of, of rebellion which had been formed and, and, and made by the brokenness of humanity and the indwelling of sin amongst God's people. Who would not walk in his ways. God would send a messenger. That there would be one who would come. One who would make the crooked path straight. One who would make salvation the way of hope. You see, there was a heralding that night in Bethlehem. Not only by the, the, the prophet John but also by the angels that night, as they sang that gloriously splendid song 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth, to whom God's favor rests. For born to you this day in Bethlehem, of David's line is the Savior. He is Christ the Lord. The angel's declaration that first Christmas evening that the babe had been born in Bethlehem herald in good news. Good news to the weary, good news to the brokenhearted, good news to the downtrodden, good news to the hopeless. God's news by the glorious choir of heaven that hurled forth that Jesus had left the splendor and the majesty of heaven and that he had came forth into this world as a baby was the assurance that God was enacting that rescue plan. It was the assurance that God was enacting that the word that he had foretold was becoming reality in flesh before our very eyes. God's heralding message is a message of hope which has been spoken down through the millennia. Over the last 2,000 and plus years, God's message of hope in that babe, in that incarnation of Emmanuel God with us, dwelling amongst his people once again. You could have missed Jesus' coming that first Christmas. You could have noticed that nothing was really happening that night. In that sleepy town of Bethlehem, we see the the reality of what happened. In verse, thirdly, in verses 9 to 13, we see that Christ did not come with majesty or with fanfare, but he came in humility. Verses 9 through to 13. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Jesus left the majesty and the splendor of heaven's throne room. And he came into this world vulnerable, helpless for you and for me. He came as that babe in a manger. Hope was born that night in the humility of the Christ child lying in that feeding trough. He was the creator and sustainer. Yet even on that night, he was despised and rejected. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, and who believed in his name, he gave right to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. You see, John, at the very outset of his gospel, is foretelling what would happen and why Christ would come. He came as a babe born to die. He came to be the rescue plan. He came to bring the message of hope to a world which would reject him and, to be quite honest, to a world which still rejects him today. The God who created us in our mother's wombs, the God who created and sustains the universe, the God who dwelled in human form, who suffered as 
we have suffered, who has went through trial and temptation and tribulation as we have, yet he was rejected. He was denied. He was rebuked and he was scorned. But yet we see in the humility of Christ. He came to be the servant king. He did not come to be served. But yet he came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That is the Christ child. That is the assurance that we have this evening as we read John's gospel, as, an, as we unpack the, the wondrous truth of this word becoming flesh and dwelling amongst us. But John said there is hope. Verse 12 says, But to all who did receive him and who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. I don't know if you're watching this this evening. I don't know what your relationship with Jesus is like. I don't know if you've ever thought about the ways and the truths and the realities of Jesus or Christianity. But there's a wonderful hope in this story tonight. There's a wonderful hope in the message of the Christian faith. How the world betrays it as rules and regulations. How the world betrays it as outdated and foreign and beyond the appeal is wrong. Because in this message of hope there is assurance to eternal life. That the one who created and sustained the universe is the one who will come back again for each one of us. And the gift of that hope is free to see. It was free to me over those 20 years ago. As a young teenager. Sitting in a small brother in hall in Ballymena, Northern Ireland. The message of that hope reached my heart and changed my life. And believe me, it changed my life. And it can change your life this evening. It can change your life. Don't get me wrong, it won't make it easier. It won't be without its difficulties. But be rest assured to the, this evening, if you love and you accept and you trust in the name of Jesus and you believe in the hope that this gospel message gives us, that Jesus is the assurance that He is the one who will sustain us. He will be the one who will look after us and He will be the one who will give us the hope of eternal life. Then I ask, what are you going to do with this free gift this evening? Are you going to accept the promise of eternal life? Are you going to accept this free gift to become a child of God, loved and cherished and cared for more than you will ever know or imagine? Do you want to know this hope in your life? These last two years have sucked. There's no nicer word to use it. They have sucked. We have been through a pandemic like no other. Yet again, even in these last days, we have seen more restrictions being placed upon us. And we could be mistaken to think that there is no hope in the world. We are tired. We are weary. We are frustrated. We are exhausted. And it can feel like we are without hope. But can I reassure you tonight that there is hope. There is hope in the name of Jesus. There is hope in found in that being born in Bethlehem. There is hope in the Savior of the world who became Emmanuel, God with us. 
in Christ's holiness, in Christ's heralding, in Christ's humility. Finally, this evening, we see that Christ came in humanity. In verse 14 it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. You see, Jesus did come into this world. He came into this world as you and I came into this world. He came into this world as God's rescue plan. That we could have that relationship. Jesus felt what we have felt. Jesus has experienced what we have experienced. Jesus has felt humanity's burdens and trials and tribulations as we have felt them. But he is hope. He is immeasurably hopeful. He can fill you with hope. He can fill you with the assurance of his grace and his truth. You see, we do this every Christmas. We share the same story Every Christmas. This Christmas is like every Christmas before. And we are called to acknowledge what the birth of Jesus represents for each one of us. And what we who are Christians need to be reminded of is to be faithful to remember. Is that Jesus represents the one true God made flesh to usher into the world the reality of God's heavenly kingdom. To be on earth as it is in heaven. The world needs people who not only recognize, but makes room for the Savior of the world to be their reality. That's what it means to be a Christ one. And you see, when the church allows Jesus, the one through whom all things came to be their way, their truth, and their life. Then all people are then free to encounter the life transformation, life transforming love of Jesus through the church. You see, the church is a body of people who love Jesus. Who want to share Jesus. And like the angels and the shepherds and the wise men. They want to make Jesus known. That is a gift to this world that we can give this Christmas. Is to share the name of Jesus. To give hope in the name of Jesus. Maybe you're not a Christian. And maybe you've been wondering what Christianity is all about. In the new year here at Allness Baptist Church, we're going to be doing a, a, a three-week course. That's how, how short a time frame it is. Three weeks, three nights. Entitled Hope Explored. And we're just going to watch a short trailer about that video now. There are few emotions more powerful than hope. It's a spark inside you that brings a smile to your lips 
a light that shows on your face, a feeling that lifts your head and pulls you forward. These days, hope like that often feels hard to come by. Maybe you've experienced your share of disappointments, but real hope is what the Christian faith claims to offer. A joyful expectation for the future, based on true events in the past, which changes everything about my present. Hope Explored is a three session series for anyone who is looking for a hope worth having. Whatever you do or don't believe, this is your invitation to explore, to discuss, to question, to discover. This is Hope Explored. If you want to know more about this hope that we as Christians celebrate at Christmas and every day in our Christian lives, then I want to extend a personal invitation for you to, to join with us. I would encourage you to email the email address to keep an eye on our website and our social media as we explore hope together. There's no cost to this. There's no strings attached. It's just three nights looking at the message of the Christian faith. And I would warmly invite you to come join us. May the church and may each one of us encounter the reality of God in Jesus Christ afresh this Christmas. And may we be assured that Jesus is God with us. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that your Son is the one who brings hope into the world. That your son is the one who brings assurance to the chaos. And Father, we pray this evening that if there are those that do not yet know you, that they would come to a knowledge of yourself. Father, that they would come and they would explore this hope. Father, for us who are Christians who call Jesus our Lord and Savior, would you help us be the people transformed by the truth of Jesus Christ? That as people look and see our lives, they would recognize Jesus as Lord of their lives. But as ones who make room for the Savior of the world to be their reality. Father, would you help us as a church to be the way, the truth, and the life for all people to freely encounter Jesus Christ this Advent and Christmas season and every day. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we close our time together, we're going to sing the words of the hymn, Silent Night, Still the Night.
Well, can I take this opportunity to thank you for joining with us on this Carl's by Candlelight service, and I do pray that you've been blessed uh, by our time of fellowship together. Just to highlight that on Facebook and YouTube on Christmas morning at 10.30 a.m., there will be a short Christmas service uh, just worshiping and exalting the Savior who has been born to us, Christ the Lord. And so I would encourage your families to to tune in from the comfort of your home, get a good cup of coffee, uh, unwrap the, the selection boxes, and join with us as we celebrate the birth of the Messiah. We would also love you to join with us on Boxing Day. Our, our services are again online at 11 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube, and it would be a joy to see you as we worship God together on the last Sunday of 2021. Please do put that down in your diary and do make an effort to join with you. us. It would be great to see you. Can I also just again encourage you to keep an eye on our social media regarding the Hope Explored course. And if you have any questions or information you would like, then please don't hesitate to contact us. You can find information on our website, www.allnessbc.org.uk, or you can email pastor at allnessbc.org.uk. As we close our service together, receive now the benediction. Heavenly Father, we came here tonight, aware that the kingdom Jesus came to bring needs to be worked out in the real and tough challenges that lie ahead of us. But aware too that if it is Jesus' kingdom we are working out, we cannot get enough of Jesus himself. We cannot worship him enough, cannot ponder him enough, cannot invoke him enough, cannot love and adore him enough, cannot taste him enough. That is why we are here tonight. And so open our eyes afresh to his way of doing things. Putting into our minds and hearts a new vision of how things could be. And let us celebrate the fact that the government is upon his shoulders. And let us go out into this Christmas and New Year to face the much herald darkness within the news of a great light. Emmanuel, God with us. And so now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with each one, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless and have a wonderful Christmas.